June 30, 1908. The skies above the stony Tunguska River in Siberia erupted with a blinding flash, followed by a shock wave that flattened 80 million trees across 800 square miles. Villages were hurled from their huts, windows shattered 400 miles away, and even in England, instruments detected seismic tremors they could not explain. No crater was ever found, no meteorite recovered, and no known explosion in history has matched the Tunguska event scale without leaving a trace. So scientists scrambled for answers, but what they found only deepened the mystery. The first official expedition didn't arrive until 1927, when Russian mineralogist Leonid Kulik trekked through mosquito-infested swamps to reach the blast zone, only to discover an eerie landscape, trees scorched but standing at the epicenter, all others radiating outward like matchsticks from a point of impact that didn't exist. The locals whispered of a god's wrath, but a flaming eye in the sky of animals fleeing days before the blast, and of strange lights that danced above the forest for hours, a testimony repeated too often to ignore. Kulik found no crater, no meteoric debris, only peculiar patterns in the soil and magnetized. Rocks that suggested a force beyond conventional physics had torn through the earth that morning. Over the next decades, Soviet and Western scientists proposed countless theories a meteorite airburst, a comet made of ice, even a miniature black hole that passed through the planet. But none could explain the geomagnetic storm, the blue skies across Europe for weeks, or the radiation spike recorded in tree rings from that year. Declassified Soviet files later revealed aerial surveys in the 1960s showing ground patterns consistent with microwaves or directed energy weapons technology that should not have existed at the time, but eerily resembled theoretical diagrams from Tesla's unpublished papers. Nikola Tesla, the eccentric genius of wireless power, had been experimenting with his Wardenclyffe Tower in New York exactly one day prior to the Tunguska blast, and some researchers have speculated that his attempt to demonstrate wireless energy transmission may have overshot triggering an unintended energy discharge halfway across the world. Tesla himself never publicly claimed responsibility, but cryptic notes from his journals released after his death mention an energy focus test aimed at the northern latitudes and refer to a vast forest ignition, lines dismissed by most but never disproven. Still, if it wasn't a meteor or a comet, or an accident of science. Then, what was it that ignited the sky above Siberia? And why did its effects ripple through global weather patterns, causing anomalous warming in some regions and a year of crop instability across Europe? In 1973, two physicists, Albert Jackson and Michael Ryan, published a theory in Nature suggesting a small black hole had entered Earth's atmosphere passed through the planet and exited near the North Atlantic. But seismic records showed no matching exit event, unless it exited slower or deeper than instruments could detect. Stranger still, in the late 1980s, satellite thermal imaging over Tunguska revealed lingering heat signatures deep underground, unexplained hotspots that emitted no visible radiation but caused instrument drift in magnetometers flown over the site. In 2004, Russian scientists drilling in the epicenter struck a layer of anomalous material. Few silicates and high-pressure carbon forms resembling synthetic diamonds, but with isotopic ratios not found in any known meteorite class. Nearby, they recovered fragments containing traces of iridium and osmium, elements common in asteroids, but layered between compounds that hinted at artificial alloy, as if the object that detonated had been engineered, not natural. Several eyewitness accounts, once dismissed, 
Describe the object not as a falling stone, but as a cylindrical torch, trailing a blue flame, maneuvering before detonation, including one from a hunter named Chekarin, who claimed it turned in the air and paused briefly before exploding. These details echo modern-day observations of UAPs, maneuverability, silent flight, high-altitude bursts, and electromagnetic interference, all reported over Tunguska, decades before any nation possessed flight. In 2008, on the centennial of the blast, an Italian-Russian joint expedition used ground-penetrating radar and located a subsurface cavity beneath Lake Cecco. A small body of water formed shortly after the explosion, which some believe holds fragments of the original object. But each attempt to retrieve samples has been thwarted by thick mud layers, unexplained sensor failures, and once by the sudden illness of three divers who reported hallucinations and burning skin after surfacing. Some whisper that the object beneath Lake Chaco is still active that its energy field remains dormant but dangerous, and that tests on the lake water show elevated tritium levels, a byproduct of fusion reactions. In 2012, a former Russian aerospace engineer, under a pseudonym, leaked documents to a Czech journal alleging that a non-meteoric object of unknown origin had been classified as temporarily interred by the Soviet Academy of Sciences and was monitored from a deep earth sensor array until the early 90s. When asked why this data was never released, he responded only, because it's not from here and it didn't come alone. In 2017, NASA scientists revisited the atmospheric models of Tunguska and found the airburst had released the equivalent of 15 megatons of TNT, similar to the Castle Bravo hydrogen bomb yet no nuclear signatures were ever recorded, prompting one analyst to comment. Whatever it was, it knew how to hide its footprint. Theories today range from antimatter collisions, to alien probes self-destructing, to ancient defense systems malfunctioning, and even a time loop experiment gone wrong, based on obscure footnotes in Soviet time displacement theory papers dated 1982. What remains undisputed is this. The Tunguska event changed the climate, altered the magnetic field, and sent shockwaves through history. Yet no definitive answer has emerged after more than a century of investigation. Its impact was visible from space, recorded in ship logs across the globe, and etched into folklore and scientific journals alike. But its origin remains an open wound in the history of science. In the quiet museums of Moscow, preserved branches from the blast zone still emit low levels of radiation, and visitors report static interference in their cameras and phones, even today. Every few years, new expeditions set out, seeking answers in permafrost and buried memory, and yet each one returns with more questions, more anomalies, more silence. If this was a cosmic accident, it was the most calculated one in history. If it was a warning, we still don't know from whom or why. As one geophysicist wrote in 2020, we know more about the surface of Mars than about what truly happened in Siberia that morning. So the forest stands regrown yet haunted, the sky watches, and beneath the calm waters of Lake Cheko, something ancient or not waits. As the world above forgets, but never truly lets go.